Well hello there, how's everybody going? Vicky here. Hope everybody's having a lovely week. I think it is... Oh, that's only Monday. <laughs> so hopefully too much hasn't gone wrong. So what I've got here is, is I've got a signature already to make made up. I've got a few of them off to the side. So we're doing a one journal signature and I'll tell you more about it as we go on through. So the first step to getting the signature together is to find or gather all your papers together, all the different things that you're going to be putting in your journal. So I've done that, I've got four piles here. So I've got four signatures to make up. So Correlating and all the rest of it, you don't need to actually see me doing it because I'm buzzing here and buzzing there. Well, sort of buzzing, my buzzing, to put all like together to make a stack, as you can see. So what I do now is, is well, just give me a little bit of space. Just a minute. I'll, I'll have my handy dandy packet paper stacker out, and that works as. An extra bit of bench for me so I'm going to be putting these together now so I'll just run through one with you then maybe do one um, 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 I'm trying to stop that we'll, we'll do this one together so I tend to start from the middle which I find it easier to do so I want this and I try and get it orientated the right way to start with so this is an envelope and it's actually going to be the middle and I'll have tucks coming in from that way center seam now I do have some printables here and always tend to get that edge around there now these printables are from what oh, just read it so I wouldn't forget to tell you just give me a second. Oh, isn't that terrible? <laughs> I feel really bad now. Just give me a second. Chapter one. Chapter one papers. So a few people have said to me, what do I do when I'm crafting? Sometimes I will watch Netflix. At the moment, Graham and I are watching the BBL, the Big Bash Cricket League. We quite like that. So we've been watching that and sitting together in the lounge room together, which is a bit of a novelty for Graham and I. Not spending time together, but actually doing it sitting in our lounge room. Um, we're always busy making stuff. Now this is a junk journal and my journey further in as we go my journal making if I'm making a, a journal with a hard cover and more than one signature so the signatures don't get too thick I always have it squared off um, up well, top and bottom and also here along this edge so every paper would be even now these signatures are bulking out a little bit which means it makes it a little bit difficult for me to actually trim them because I have um, my, my um, cutter has capacity of 49 pages yeah I know I don't know why it's not 50 but 49 so it starts to get a little bit too thick I can't with any accuracy now run a blade along with the um, ruler my hands sort of like can't hold it long enough for me to get through it so with these ones that are going into soft covers when you open the cover up because of the cover it's sort of like a little bit wonky well not wonky wonky is not the right word but even when you've got it dead straight on down here it still will look oh, i don't know what i was saying <laughs> i'm talking about um trying to be a lot more fluid with my journal making not being so rigid 
So that's what I was saying. But because of the soft cover, the papers sort of um, move forward on their own. And it doesn't look like it's straight. I think that's what I was going to say. Not straight. So they don't line up anyway when you open it. So I am getting very good at as long as my papers don't protrude past the cover. I'm happy with the soft covers. Um, soft one signature soft colors, soft covers. Sorry, my head's racing. So this isn't chapter one. I think I've used all chapter one in these. They're um, digitals. Uh, chapter one, go over and visit them. They have beautiful, beautiful papers. Absolutely amazing papers. So thank you to those people. This is a chapter one as well. So it looks like I've gone all the way. Now, if I'm not watching a story on Netflix, I listen to music. So, oh, that's what I was saying. We're watching the cricket at night. So during the day, I've really been getting back into things and music seems to be getting me going. So there probably will be a little bit of a few talkovers or voiceovers I should say I'm not I'm just not sure what, what this is going to be whether or not you're going to be listening to me babble on here and not make any sense at all now it's a really good idea to make sure you orientate your papers right from the get-go I do try to get it fairly even up and down vertical I believe now you see that is just even for a relaxed brain. That is so crooked. Tearing papers isn't that difficult, girls. What I do is, is I tend to forget that you are best to just hold your ruler down, obviously, and, and sort of like have it there. But bring your paper up so it's sort of over the ruler. And then just keep holding it as you go down and sort of bring bring it up over and usually that helps so that one's going to go that way and you will see that it's still wonky but it's not outside anything so I actually quite like that I don't know if my brain's going to let it stay there or not that remains to be seen so this is a bit of atlas and I'm also liking just the torn torn edges I'm, I'm getting into the trying to make it a little bit more relaxed like I said with the the soft covers now this paper going in this is can you hear it rustle 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 it's really good it's um glad bake so you know how you get the the non-stick oven paper well this is the same only it's in the echo colors Now this is just a page, I stuck book book pages down onto a piece of coffee, ta coffee, um, coffee paper and then I put serviettes over the top of that. So now I think that's quite a nice paper and 
it was very cheap to do, a bit creative. So I think this one might be a little bit too wide, I'm not sure. This is out of a, an old journal, an invoice book. So it is indeed the real thing, this one. Now you can see what happens is the more you put in, the more it, it um, scoots off out in front. I may cut a little bit of it off depending on how much it overlaps or I might just leave it the same. So just Now when I first started doing these, there's no way <laughs> would I have ever been able to guess or, or, or to um, foresee um, is me just tearing things off with a ruler and having things a little bit crooked. That is very un-me, new word of the day. I tend to be a bit perfectionistic and I tend to want everything exactly right. Now the problem with that is, is none of us are ever going to do anything perfect. But also too, I'm learning and understanding the more I, journals I do, that the fact that they have junk in their title, like I used to make legitimate junk journals, they were literally out of junk. And, and I would use them for all sorts of different things, mainly notebooks. But with the journals, I've tended, my notebooks need to be all square. Um, so I'm just trying to really loosen up and, and just let my mind wander and enjoy the process of, of what I'm doing. Because when you're trying to be perfect, and when you won't accept anything other than perfect, it, it's crippling. It becomes almost impossible to sit down in your creative space and be able to do anything. So, as hard as it might be, and, and I have found it hard, so okay, if I can do it, you lot can do it. How's that for a deal? Just try and relax a little bit and, and just not worry because it, it is a skill to be able to just go with the flow. It really is, not to get all caught up. And I haven't put my pages in.
So let's put that one back. I've got all I've got that seeded in there. I don't want it to I think if I'm going to be making more than a few journals at a time, these clips, these oversized clips, are just perfect for sewing in journals. I don't know where the rest of them are. Okay, so now I've got the first one done. And this is where I will have a look and see whether or not I think... We need to be cutting any off the sides. Right, I'm going to have a little bit of a, just bounce it into the centre. I also find that if I get hold of it, if I just gently twist it in, you can actually feel the pages getting pushed back in. And in the big scheme of things, that's pretty good. So, with the exception of that bit there, I shall stop fiddling. Okay, so now you've seen me do that one, I'll just pop off, put some music on, and I will do the other three, and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back again. We've got all our I've got all the signatures together, one signature per journal. So that's all done. So we'll put them to the side at the moment. Now what I've got here, I've got some journal covers. So this is fabric. I've used Vlies Effects and the Heat and Bond, which basically I guess is uh, um, double-sided sticky tape. It has got, you, you iron it down. I'll show you how it's done. So that one's been done using the heat and bond. Now I had heat and bond and I ran out of it and I swapped over to the other brand and I'm not as happy with the other brand as what I was with the heat and bond for this. So these so this is so these are all fabric ones, these ones here. So this will be the journal covers and they've all got a calico inside. That's another one. So these are all the ones that I've got so far. And this is, all these are backed with calico. But the paper's actually Kaiser Craft gift wrapping uh, paper. And then there's this one here. And there's this one here. Now one of them has been glued on with glue stick. Because I thought I'd run out of um, the heat and bond. But I found some more. So what I thought I'd do is, is we'll do one paper and we'll do one fabric. Now, you can do the fabric with, with paper. There's no reason why you can't. I just happen to like the product of the heat and bond. It's easy for me. So I do actually like to iron. So this is a fat quarter, like referred to as a fat quarter in quilting terms. So this is going to be, I probably should have ironed it before because we all know how to iron, don't we? So I just like to give it a little bit of a press. Do you, do you have to? No, probably not. Now the reason why I put the baking paper over the fabric is, is this is a crafter iron and give me a second. One pictures worth a thousand words it's had a hard life it's a good it, it was a very cheap iron I bought at Big W I don't know I guess a bit like a Walmart or, um, it's not a great iron I certainly wouldn't want to be ironing my clothes with it it would work I don't put water in it I mean there's nothing really but I like to iron our clothes well, mainly Graham's, most of mine I picked because you don't have time. <laughs> so this is um, heat and bond, like a heat and bond. I mean, I'm not sure what brand this is. It could possibly be like a Blythe's Effects, which is a, a, a brand name. But I'm not 100% sure. Just a minute. That was great. Just coming in to tell me he was off to walk the dogs. 
So now nothing dogs have gone now the cat's stalking me. I'm actually going to barricade myself in a little bit because I don't want her to burn herself. Okay, so double like double sided tape, but you need to use the heat to uh, bond it on, fuse it onto well, the paper, but you can use this, people use it for applique, all sorts of different things, but it's a great tool for applique, raw edge fat. And obviously my barricades aren't worth very much at all. Mrs, you sit there because the iron is hot. No, you'll get burnt. You can sit there. It's fat. Well, you can be cross too. I only fed you 15, 20 minutes ago. Now what I should have done is just put a little bit of baking paper underneath this when I was doing the edge because you just heard it stick to the, the tea towel, which means... So I'm using 150 GSM weight paper and it's in the huge, great sheets. Um, and it's just as 150 GSM sketch paper. So now that we've got that nicely adhered, what we do is we now we just peel the paper off it and I don't know how old this is. I wouldn't have thought it'd be terribly old. But see, that's lifting. That's lifting okay there. So if I just bring that up a little bit. Yeah. And to avoid that happening, just put a little bit of baking paper underneath you. Um, right so there's a little bit there so you can see that there it's just like a it's like a layer of glue and the idea is to iron the white paper on the back the release paper until you can get it to release if it doesn't release perhaps it's not quite ironed on enough just just take it off gently I found with the, the heat and bond on the paper, like I've never had any trouble with this when I've been putting it onto fabric, but the heat and bond seemed to go better on the paper. So we just tear it off. Now, this is one way to do it. And I guess I know this way and do this because I'm a patchworker patchworker and, and the soil so I, I am aware of of the product I'm just going to cut that little bit off there because I'm just going to keep sticking it down now like I said because it's an old iron I will put this down which is my iron side can't even tell which is my iron side. There you go. I'm not fuss and bother about nothing. So now I'm just going to cover. So that's put a layer of glue over there. So just think in terms if we've just put our double sided tape down, score tape down. And now we're, this is the equivalent of taking the back off here to stick something on top of it. I mean, like I said, we're doing it with the iron. And because this is going to be covered up, I'm not too worried about it getting marked.
Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to put a fabric back on it. So, now that is a little bit creased. So we'll just give it a bit of an iron over. Just to get the worst of it out. Because if it's got a really, really nasty crease in it, it can it can muck up your measurement. Because running right through the middle of your of your journal cover, you could have a pleat in it that you, you didn't realise was there because I think it's time I change my two towels over. Lewis so we take our piece of paper so we've got our cover on that side now we flip it over and what we're going to do is is when I find what I did with it no that's the release paper here we go so normally when you applique you would put it on the back of a fabric and then you'd, you'd then iron it to your project you'd only need one sheet of this but because I've got a piece of paper in the middle of it just to give the cover a little bit of structure it means that I have to use two pieces of this paper to do it so it's just repeating the process Oh, there we go. That is one way to get a perfectly smooth, perfectly adhered, no bubbles, no nothing, and it's nice and sturdy now, and then we are good to go. So I, this is the way I prefer to do them because it gives me a perfect, well, what I think is a perfect adherence. So it got no little bubbles anywhere. But what we'll do now is, is I'll do one with paper 
and the glue. Now I'll have a paper front and a fabric back. So we'll see. You'll see how the fabric glues down. So let me just put that out of the way. <laughs> Fling it over the back. <laughs> now oh, I should have ironed that before I chucked everything up. I don't like to get away with it. Don't tell anybody. So what I'm going to do this time is, is I'm going to use my stick glue and I'm going to cover it, obviously. So if we start up here and I put a pretty thick layer down and I try and do it this way so that I don't miss bits.
so that's our covers done now so we've got covers ready to go to the next step yeah you see I'm not happy with that because look can you see that in there that hasn't that hasn't stuck very well I doubt very much it's the paper's fault I'd say I've missed a hole I'm wondering see that it's going to it's going to annoy me alrighty so I'll ponder what I'm going to do about that and I'll go off and I'll get uh, I'll get an insert done and then we'll go through and we'll size um, all the covers against our journals and get them sewn in